Welcome back inside the Simplified Technology Solutions Intermissions Report. Austin Bruins, Minot Minotauros for the first time this season here at Riverside Arena, the third game overall between the two clubs. We'll go ahead and get to the recap of the first 20 minutes of action here in Austin. But before we do, let's go ahead and take a listen to an interview I did earlier this week with Bruins assistant coach, Justin Fisher. Justin, thanks again for taking the time out of your busy week. I know you're trying to get the boys ready to go and prepped up for Minot. So thanks again for taking the time to join us here on this interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. So when you look at this Minot Minotauros team, what is really, what are you game planning for and what do you expect that they're going to be throwing on the ice throughout this weekend? They play fast. They play very, very fast. They're a quick team. Um, you know, they have some big boys, but a lot of them, you know, aren't so big. Like they move their feet and they get working off the offense. Um, they have a really aggressive forecheck. So I think the one thing going against them and their for, is their forecheck is making sure that our D are getting back to pucks really quick and um, we're playing fast as well. Um, to counter that is, you know, just being very quick and making sure that we, you know, we know where our outs are in our D zone. Um, if we can work and have a quick and fast outs, um, it leads for more opportunities in our own zone. And, you know, if you have the puck more in their zone than ours, you have a better chance of winning. When you look at this Austin Bruins team and you look at Minot, what the Bruins have to do to counter them, do you think that plays well into the Bruins' strengths here as of late? Yeah, I think so. Um, lately, we've been, you know, we've been playing really well. Um, I think we've had a couple um, lackadaisical plays where kind of decided the game. But overall, last the last couple of these games, we've been um, playing, I'd say, 60 minutes as best as we've been. Uh, maybe it's been around 50, but um, – those 10 minutes have been kind of hurting us. So um, we play fast. Um, we've been playing pretty fast the last couple of weeks, and we have also been playing physical. So when you play a quick team like Minot, being physical is a good job and a good way to wear them down. Um, you know, if you keep doing that from the get-go, come the third period, hopefully their legs are kind of dogging them a little bit, and that allows us to, you know, take more opportunities and get more pucks than that. One thing, when you take a look at this Minot Minotauros team, they've committed more penalties than anybody else in the division this year, and they do not have a very good penalty killing unit, converting at about 72% coming into Friday night's game. The Bruins power play has definitely been improving over the last, I'd say, month, month and a half or so. But how important is that aspect of the game going to play into this weekend? Yeah, it's going to be huge. Um, there's been a lot of games where they've been decided all by special teams. Um, and I think the last couple of weeks we've been doing a good job of capitalizing on some of our power play units. Um, when it comes to the power play, it's all about getting pucks through and puck retrievals, right? So um, when you get pucks in that, you got to be able, be able to have bodies there and, you know, jam home those rebounds. And then when pucks go flying into the corners, you got to be able to retrieve it and you got to outman them and find your outs that are usually up the wall or down the other weak side and, you know, get back into working our rotation. So they do a good job of clogging up the zone and blocking shots. And it's, we got to find those lanes. So if we can find those lanes, I can see us being pretty successful when it comes to our power play unit. How important is this Friday night game? The Bruins have not yet won back-to-back -back games this season. I don't know if you were aware of that. I'm sure you were, but the Bruins have not won back-to-back -back games. And really it's hard to get on a roll and get that momentum and have that emotional transfer from game to game. How important is it here to win Friday night and just better set yourself up for Saturday? It's very important. Yeah. I've noticed that we have not won any back to back, so it's going to be huge going into this weekend and it all starts with Friday, you know, having a good game plan Friday and executing on that game plan. And, you know, then we'll go back in. Hopefully we, uh, you know, take the game on Friday. We'll watch a couple of video clips with the guys, seeing what else we can work on, what we can counter from and what they did well against us and how we can kind of hold that from happening on Saturday. And then Saturday, it's about a mindset, you know, um, there's a big, there's a saying that I've been giving the guys is we want to dictate our future, right? We want to plant, like we want to be able to come back eight weeks from now and knowing that we're ready for the playoffs and we're already in. So we got to start doing that now. Um, so Hopefully we start that on Friday and then we'll continue, you know, that success that we had on Friday going into Saturday and countering on some stuff that we could have worked on. And, you know, that all comes with, uh, you know, like I said, and I've said it many times is, you know, making sure we have the right mindset going into the weekend. When we talk about scores on this team and secondary scoring in particular, when you look at the top scores, this Austin Bruins team from number one down to number seven, 
there's seven guys that are separated by only seven points uh, from Carson Riddle at the top with 22 points down to Alex Trombley with 15. We're starting to see some more of that secondary scoring come in. Kyle Alexia got his first goal of the year to go with his seven assists a couple weeks ago. Alex Trombley has been on a little bit of a hot streak. Even guys like Walter Zacker. What more do the Bruins have to do to keep getting those numbers up and to really start putting up three, four goals a game? Continue working on our four check. Our four check's been really good, and that's allowing us to kind of wear teams down because we play hard, right? So I think wearing them down on our four check, and then that allows us to have good zone time. When we have good zone time, we've been able to get pucks to the net really quickly. And, you know, a lot of our goals, they haven't been pretty. You know, they haven't. And, you know, we've had a couple here and there that probably are highlight reels, but a lot of stuff's been around the net. Like you talk about Kyle getting his first goal. His was a greasy goal right in front of the net. And we had a good F1 four check for Millie that happened off that. So getting those greasy goals that are in front of the net and jamming home rebounds are going to be, you know, kind of what allows us to succeed in a lot of these games, especially when we play, you know, these games that are in division against like a team like Minot. So um, just allowing to continue that four check and, you know, getting pucks in that's just clear as day is the one thing that you have to do. Everybody wants to get those pretty goals and be able to tag John Butcher Gross on Twitter and see if he can, you know, go ahead and propel you into stardom. But, you know, it all, all it comes down to is just putting the buck, puck in the back of the net no matter how it happens. So yeah. the, last, the, uh, the last time we had you on this, I'll leave you with this question. You know, most of the conversation was just how you were adjusting. This was, we talked in Minot, as a matter of fact, the last time we played this team. Now that you've been here for about two thirds of the season and everything, how are you settling in? You found your groove and uh, what's going on with you as a coach? Uh, it's been good. I've I definitely found a little bit of a groove. Uh, it was all just kind of trying to find a schedule. It's it's kind of difficult, obviously, with this COVID year and having games all every other day. It seems like, but um, it's been good. Uh, I have a good kind of schedule going on when it comes to preparing for our games and preparing preparing for the team that's coming in that weekend and stuff like that. So, you know, I've been enjoying it. Been getting a lot of help from uh, Coach Howard. So, you know, a lot of the guys have been helping out. You know, there's vets that have been here for countless years so you know I lean on them a little bit to help me out and kind of stuff that you know what's working and what's not working and you know ultimately they're the ones that are I'm trying to teach so you know not all of them learn the same so I gotta I gotta try and do some different stuff for different types of players so it's been good well we're happy to have you and good luck tonight against Minot and tomorrow against Minot and for the rest of the year I'm sure we'll have you back on here uh, at least one more time before we wrap everything up thanks Justin yeah sounds good thanks TJ that was Bruins assistant coach Justin Fisher. We got plenty more coming up on the Simplified Technology Solutions Intermissions Report after this. Stay tuned. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. You uh, good? Yeah, I'm good. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Later, All right. See you.